Hello, and welcome to episode 22 of Made with Carlene Energy. I'm Carlene, and this is my knitting podcast. I hope you all are doing well. If you are a returning viewer, you know that I have slacked off once again, and it's been another few weeks since I last recorded an episode. And if this, if this is your first time checking out my podcast, then welcome, and thanks so much for coming by to see what I've been up to. Uh, it is Sunday, May 1st, which is ridiculous. I mean, what is life? I can't believe another month is over. Um, I feel like March went at a, a really nice steady pace, and then April was just a flash. Uh, April did not stick around long at all. And yeah, now it's May, although it doesn't feel like it here in the Hudson Valley of New York where I live. Um, it's misty rain and, and chilly, and... Uh, just, yeah, a nice day to stay inside and knit and drink tea and talk to you guys about what I've been up to. Although, honestly, I feel like I have not been knitting very much at all. I've mostly just been going to yarn shops and buying yarn. Um, so I've been doing a lot of dream knitting and uh, not so much actual knitting, but I will show you what I've got anyway. I'm drinking some uh, yogi tea called Raspberry uh, Passion, or Perfect Energy Raspberry Passion. Um, anyway, it's a herbal raspberry tea, and it's supposed to be good for um, yeah, boosting your energy a little bit without too much caffeine. And um, yeah, I'm pretty tired. I've had a, a very social, busy weekend, and so yeah, I need a little a little boost. You might hear in the background my two parakeets, Edison and the Dude. Uh, they are being very chattery today. Um, the Dude I've had for a while, and then Edison is my new guy. I just got him a couple weeks ago. And he's actually started to be a little more chatty. He was pretty quiet when I first got him. And um, today, or this morning, I was sitting here knitting, and he I, I thought it was the dude that was talking, but I looked over, and the dude was actually having a little nap, and Edison was chattering away. So that's really fun. And I really want to um, to have them, you know, co-host with me. Um, I'm looking over at them right now because their cage is across the room from where I'm sitting. Um, I do want to introduce you guys to Edison at some point soon. But um, he doesn't, he's, he's hesitant to come out of the cage. It really takes a lot of coaxing for him to come out. Um, usually if I take the dude out, uh, Edison gets a little frantic because he feels like he's being left out and then he comes out himself. But he's not quite used to um, me just putting my hand in and having him um, step onto my finger and come out of the cage. Um, the dude does that just, you know, he's trained to do that at this point. But Edison's still getting used to that. And then, um, yeah, I have so much, I have such a pile here to talk about that having them distract me any more than they already do when they're just talking across the room um, is, is just going to be too much for today. But they do say hello, and um, yeah, they're good birds. I really enjoy, I'm enjoying having two uh, instead of just one. Um, I think I said in my last episode it was strange at first to, to not just have it be me and the dude anymore, but... They've been interacting with each other, and it's really cute, and yeah, it's just, it's been fun. Anyway, tangents already, but, um, I guess I will start with, um, I don't have any finished objects. I haven't had, I don't know when the last time I had a fi finished object was, um, which is a bummer. Um, I just haven't finished, been able to sit down and finish anything. Um, I am wearing some, a scarf that I knit several years ago. This is the Summit, Summit Scarf pattern, which is free on uh, Nitty.com. So it's this really cool, it's very, it's reminiscent of the Clapotee pattern, which was a very popular one from Nitty several years ago. So this is reminiscent of that. It's, it is another drop stitch pattern. So, um, but yeah, you get these, these waves and these holes. And it's really fun to make. It, it looks really complicated, but it, it was a very repetitive pattern, and I was able to memorize it. And you start start along the bottom edge and then knit, knit up. Um, so it was really fun to do. And I've made, actually, 
um, I think four or five other versions of this for friends because anytime anyone sees it, they want one. I do have to reblock it because it's it's definitely it definitely could be a lot wider and drapier, but I haven't I haven't reblocked it in a long time. But anyway, so that's the summit scarf. I wish I could tell you what the the yarn is, um, but I bought it at a yarn shop in Virginia several years ago and totally lost the ball band. I really wish I knew what it was because it's beautiful and it's perfect for this um, pattern, but I don't know what it is. Um, I know that it was a fingering weight merino blend and I had two skeins, I think, so it's I think it takes something like 800 yards. But yeah, this is one of my favorite um, items. Um, I think on my Facebook, actually, there are so many pictures on my Facebook where I have this scarf on. Uh, it's kind of funny because I wear all my other scarves as well, but for some reason this ends up being the one that I'm photographed in a lot. And so I feel like people probably think that I'm always wearing this, which, you know, might be true. Um, I have tried to um, definitely wear all my other scarves um, and, yeah, really switch them out. Um, anyway, yeah, this is like a security blanket for me. It's uh, it's one of my favorites. And here I go rambling again. It's, like, it's because I'm tired. <laughs> but uh, we're going to get through this. I'm excited to show you my new work in progress, which you haven't seen at all. And I'm actually hoping to maybe finish this this evening um, because I really don't have that much knitting left to do on it. So um, uh, last weekend I actually met up with Shane of the Nitro Version podcast. He's been on a hiatus from his podcast for a while, but I love his podcast and I love Shane. He's one of my uh, good nitty friends that I met on the internet because of podcasts and then we met at Rhinebeck and um, last weekend he was in Hartford, Connecticut where his parents live. Um, he, he lives in Boston right now but he was in Hartford which is uh, only about an hour away from Kent, Connecticut which is where uh, my local yarn shop is, Black Sheep Yarns. And um, yeah so Shane drove over to meet up with me at Black Sheep and uh, we went to the Kent Coffee and Chocolate Shop and got some coffee and chocolate, which is delicious. And yeah, just hung out at the uh, the yarn shop for a few hours and knit. And uh, Shane got to meet all my uh, friends at the yarn shop um, and the owner, Nancy, who was amazing. And it was just a really, really nice afternoon. And uh, Shane said it was okay for me to buy yarn. So I did, and I will show you that. <laughs> Uh, when I talk about the rest of my stash, but um, yeah, so that was Saturday afternoon, um, last weekend, I think, and um, after he, he left, he had to head out around 3, back to his uh, parents' place, so um, I really wanted to cast on with the yarn that I bought that day, um, but I decided that I would cast on for a project I've had. Um, lined up for a while. It's a tank top and I've had the yarn for it for a little bit which I've also, I also got in a sale I think last year at some point from the Black Sheep and um, the pattern is called L.2 so yeah it's this tank top with this really open back and it's by Lydia Symbol and it's, um, it's a, sh a Shibui pattern um, so it calls for Shibui linen, but I'm using um, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Levold uh, Hempathy, which is 34% hemp, 41% cotton, 25% uh, modal. And yeah, so I had four skeins of this in the mustard colorway. This is what it looks like. It's kind of messy right now because I'm working from both ends of the ball. It's getting a little scary. I hope I don't end up with a big tangle, but I'm almost finished, so... Um, so yeah, very mustardy, standard mustard gold color, which I'm really into uh, lately. And yeah, so I cast this on because I've I've had the yarn for it and knew what I was going to make with it for a while. And um, it starts from the bottom up and you knit in the round up until the underarms. And then you split through the front and back. So I have the body knit and then this is the basically the entire front 
which will go up like this. And um, I am doing the first loop of the back. So this will be, um, I'm just about to bind off for the first loop. So this, just this little section on this needle here is where the first loop will start. So that's where I'm at. I'm about to make this. And so yeah, I really don't have that much knitting left to do because then you just have to um, knit the straps and then graft it to the front. Um, just the front. Yeah, this is what it looks like in the, from the front. So it's obviously a pretty sheer garment with like a lot of skin showing. It's probably just going to end up as a beach cover up type of thing but I think I'm, I am going to get a lot of use out of it. I really, I really like it. I think it's, I mean, it, it'll work over a, another tank top. Um, and all the, all the projects I've seen on Ravelry of this pattern, um, I really like the finished versions and people are just wearing like bathing suit tops or tank tops underneath this. And I think it looks really cool. I really like that back detail. So yeah, I'm excited about it. And uh, I'm using size US 5, 3.75 millimeter, my interchangeable chow goos. Um, US 5 is what the pattern called for, and I did get gauge. Um, I, yeah, the, the yarn it calls for, I think, is more of a fingering weight, and this is kind of labeled as a sport weight, but my gauge seemed to be pretty good. And I have been able to try this on as I go. And I actually didn't knit the, the front as long as the pattern calls for because it does, I think it really does call for a pretty deep, um, a deep armhole. So I decided to shorten the neck, the, uh, the front a little bit so that the, the armhole doesn't end up as deep because if I, yeah, I just don't want it to be like, I don't want the armhole to be all the way down, down there. So. I think I've, I've got the sizing pretty good. I've tried it on a few times and, um, and yeah, it's, it's been so simple. I mean, it's mostly stockinette and then you just have this very, very easy pearl and knit and, um, slip stitch front panel. So it's really, really simple. And I really needed something like that. I wanted something that was going to be a quick, small item. Um, no sleeves, no, no heel turns or anything like that. Um, no stitch pattern except for, you know, this ridiculously mindless center panel. And yeah, I'm, I mean, I've almost finished it within a week. So yeah, that I, I needed something that was going to get done really quickly that I didn't have to think about. So that's, yeah, I've been really pretty monogamous on that all week. Um, I, I mean, I do have other things on the needles, um, like my Luca shawl, which I'm co-hosting a knit along for with my friends Denise of the Yarn Geek podcast and Gabby of the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. But I really don't think I will even be able to show very much progress on this. I mean, I guess, I, yeah, I have gotten a few more rows, so that's where I moved up the progress keeper from my last episode. But I didn't touch this at all this week. Um, I did work on this a little bit while Shane was here last Saturday. But um, yeah, the rows are just getting really long. So I've, I've got another almost an inch in, uh, in circumference, but it's taken a long time to actually get there. And um, I still I'm still really enjoying working on it. It's just something that you know, obviously takes a lot of concentration, and I don't want to screw it up, so um, I just haven't been in the right mood to, to pick this up. Um, but I am hosting the knit along with Gabby and, and Denise, and we have some really lovely uh, people participating in our groups, and um, I really love all the color choices that, um, that all the people that are participating and picked out, um, they're all different and they're all, I think they all really work with the pattern, um, in their own way. So I'm really excited that, um, there are some people knitting along with us. Um, it is a smaller knit along because I know it is a very, um, kind of 
it's a it's a, this is a very a big investment project. Um, takes a lot of concentration. It's lace weight. It's not something that everybody's just gonna want to pick up. But uh, it's been really fun to see the ones that are being knit, and uh, we did extend the deadline until May 30th. So if you are a speedy knitter, you could probably. I mean, I think I could have definitely had this off the needles already. I just haven't picked it up um, often enough to really put a dent in it. But it's lovely. I'm really, I'm really excited to finish it at some point. Hopefully by May 30th. Um, I'm sure if I pick it up, hopefully once I finish the tank top, I'll pick this up again and, and get really, really um, in the flow with it and finish it up because I really don't have that much more to do in the in the chart that I'm working on. Anyway, um, I'm using the Plains Yarn by Brooklyn Tweed. So this is, the pattern is the Lucas Shawl by Jared Flood in the BT uh, Brooklyn Tweed Winter 2016 collection. And I'm using the Plains Yarn, which was their limited edition lace weight. It's 100% Rambouillet. This is the Scarab colorway. Um, and yeah, just to, uh, <laughs> to rehash the details since I feel like I haven't yeah, I just haven't been recording uh, consistently enough, so yeah, but keeping it in my phone in the Fox Project bag, which uh, got coffee dumped on it in my tote bag uh, a few weeks ago, and I think it it's it's really not noticeable anymore. It's just like right here, but the this is her one of like the the limited edition wool felt or the one of a kind dyed wool felt that she uses a lot. This is Lara of Fawn and the Fox. I'm sure you're familiar, but yeah, my, my coffee disaster um, really, I don't think, has had too much of a lasting effect on the way the bag looks, so I'm, I'm glad about that. Okay, so the other, the other work in progress that I haven't touched this week at all is um, I did start the Waiting for Rain shawl, which uh, Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast was hosting a knit along for, and for some reason I thought, oh yeah, I'll cast it on, and I'll totally have it finished by May 1st, um, which is today, and now the knit along is over, and she even extended the deadline, I think the original deadline was April 1st, and I think it started in March, it was only supposed to be a month long, and then she extended it, and yeah, I started this, I think, beginning of April, and um, have totally stalled. I'm not even done with the initial increases yet uh, before you get to the, the lace panels. So, um, yeah, this was being worked on, but it really hasn't been in the last week and a half. But I really I really like how the yarn feels. It's a O-Will, O-Will, I have the label, O-Will, O-Will, O-Wash Fingering by O-Will. And not speak. Um, and this is the pearly muscle colorway, and I really like how it feels. I love the color. Um, this is a progress keeper that Amber of Yarn Junkie sent me. I got a lot of compliments on Instagram. I posted a picture of this project, and everyone loved the stitch marker because it's awesome because Amber made it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll get back to this eventually too, but it hasn't been touched. Um, for the lace panels, I've gone over this before, but I'm, I'm going to use Fairy Hair by Volan Vine. So Kristen's yarn. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to get to that part. So I think it's going to be a gorgeous contrast, but... <sighs> Just I'm just dream knitting, guys. I mean, I have I have my dream wardrobe scattered throughout my apartment. It's just still in string form. Um, yeah, it's just uh, just not happening lately. I've been reading and writing a lot more. Um, I've finished a lot of books lately, which has been really nice because usually I just don't read as much as I'd like to because of the knitting. Um, so it is, it's a trade-off. There just hasn't been enough time. Work has been really busy. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about all the things that I'm, I'm making. It's just that I'm, I'm not finding the energy and the time to do them. So it's not that I don't want to knit. It's just that, yeah, it's, it's not that I'm frustrated with my projects. It's that I, 
I want to be in the right headspace to work on them, and that hasn't really been happening lately. But I'm keeping this in this in this bag that I, I got with an order from uh, loveknitting.com. I think it just looks really pretty. It's not the best project bag because the needles stick out of it, and it wouldn't protect my yarn if I spilled my coffee in my tote bag again, but it looks pretty. <sighs> okay, I'm going to take a, take a little tea break. Um, I have, I, yeah, so um, over the past couple weeks when I haven't felt like focusing on projects, I have been adding a lot of squares to my Cozy Memories blanket, uh, my, my sock scrap blanket. So um, I think since I last shown this, I've added another um, two rows basically. So um, like this row and then this one. It's hard. It's kind of hard to show because of the way my mine is constructed. But yeah, this row of squares and then the row on top. So I've added another two rows, and a lot of the minis that I added lately have been from Dag. She is a paper Dag on Instagram and Ravelry too, I believe, and she owns the Zia Wool Shop on Etsy. And so Dag lives in New Mexico, and I really like her her yarns because they do have this very, um, you know, um, like her color scheme is just um, very desert and um, southwestern, and and I love it. Um, so one of my favorites that she sent me because I um, I'll be showing you in a few minutes. I ordered some yarn from her. And she sent me some minis as um, a little extra treat, um, thanking me for my, my podcast, which was really, really sweet, um, because I'm a terrible podcaster <laughs> and skip weeks all the time. But anyway, so this is one of one of her yarns. This is her Sugarloaf base. Um, I wish I had her little tag, because she labeled them really lovely. Um, here's some, some others that she sent me. So... I don't remember what the colorway name was, but I really like it. And she sent me this one as well. This is Lanai Yarns, which I haven't tried. And this one, the colorway is called uh, Mermaid Pool Filter, I think, which was so funny. And yeah, so thank you, Dag, for boosting my mini supply. And um, I've really enjoyed putting them into my blanket. Um, yeah, this. so this... I over the course of I think the the week before Shane came to visit me, this was the only thing I got a chance to work on, and I may, added maybe two squares that week, and um, that was all the knitting that I that I did, and that's crazy for me um, to only spend you know that was maybe an hour of knitting time um, in one week. That's like nothing. <laughs> so yeah, it's been. It's been weird, but I guess I guess that's just happened sometimes. Anyway, so um, I I guess that's that is segueing into stash enhancement, and I will start with what I um, purchased from Dag. So um, yeah, a few two weeks ago I picked up my phone, went on Instagram, and just happened happening to be at the the top of my feed was a post by Dag with this yarn. And before I even read her caption, I was like, whoa, I really need a skein of that. And then I read what the colorway name is. It is, uh, it's called Between Yoshi and the Dude. So, if you're familiar with Can uh, Candace of the Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast, uh, you might know her bird friend, Yoshi. And so Yoshi and the dude have a little cyber bromance. Um, I don't I don't know if they know it, but Candace and I know it. And so yeah, the dude and Yoshi are friends, whether they know it or not. And so Dag dyed a colorway um, inspired by the dude and Yoshi, and that is the most amazing one of the most amazing things that's happened in my whole knitting career is that now I have a colorway. Um, inspired by my, my favorite little bird. 
Um, Edison, you're my favorite too, but you know, the dude, the dude has seniority. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so this is totally the dude's colors. And then you've got these light greens for Yoshi sprinkled throughout. And um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't actually, I want to, um, I don't want to mess up the skein right now, but um, I definitely want to take it out of the skein to see um, all the other variations in here. But it's just gorgeous. Um, and this is her, so it's Zia Wool's, this is uh, Dag Shop on Ravelry, or uh, Etsy. And um, her tagline is Enchanted Fibers, which is so true. So this is her Sandia base. It's a fingering sock weight, 75% merino, superwash, and 25% nylon, 434 yards. Um, I'm so excited about it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I don't think it's going to be socks because it's too special. So it's definitely going to have to be a, I mean a shawl probably, um, combined with, with another yarn. But um, I'm so excited about it. And yeah, with, with my order, she included um, about five minis. Um, so yeah, I think these are the only two that I haven't balled up to into my blanket yet. Um, and she also sent me this little bump of fiber. Look how beautiful that is. And she sent me this really lovely note, and she said with the fiber, she thought that this would go well for my... Um, Fringe with Benefits shawl that has been in hibernation for a long time now, but it's a hand spun shawl that I have been knitting with uh, hand spun that I spun from two loop bumps. And I finally did wash the last two skeins, so um, these are the last two skeins. Sorry for giving you the finger just then. Um, <laughs> these are the last two skeins of the second loop bump that I spun for this shawl. And so Dag sent me this as maybe an extra, because um, I think I am going to need a little bit more to finish the full pattern. So this is great because now I have more to add. And this is the last skein that I'll be putting in. And then I think it's going to segue into this so, so well. Um, and I did start spinning it. So this is what it looks like, it's starting to look like spun up. So it's nice and tweedy, and um, I'm plying on the fly because that's what I did for the, the two loop bumps, and it's kind of a heavy fingering to sport weight. And yeah, I think I think that'll be a really cool transition for the end of the, the shawl. Um, so this get the thank you so much, Dag, because this does give me um, the inspiration again to, to pick up that project and try to finish it soon um, because I do really like that shawl and um, yeah it's just been it's just been um, hibernating for too long and it's too it's too pretty not to finish so thank you Dag so much and so that was one package from Dag and um, about a week later, another package from Dag showed up, and I hadn't ordered anything else. And it was just it was just Dag being her super amazing sweet self. And so she sent me another skein of um, Between Yoshi and the Dude to use for a giveaway on my podcast. Um, so that was just too kind and. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really excited to to give this away. I don't know what I'm going to which what type of giveaway I'm going to use it for yet. I I haven't had time to think about that. Um, but definitely by my next podcast, I will come up with um, a giveaway for this. Um, and um, yeah, I think it's it's just so exciting that I get to give this away since it is themed. Uh, the theme of it is is my, my bird and his friend uh, in Canada because Candace and Yoshi live in Canada so thank you Jag so much it's just so beautiful um, and she also sent another mini skein of her yarn which I really love it's called uh, this is the also the Sandia base and it's called Phoenix Rising so I will also include that with this skein so one lucky viewer will have a little Mini skein if they have a soccer and blanket. 
and a gorgeous skein for socks or shawls or whatever you can imagine. So, thank you, Dag. That was that was just amazing. Okay, so another amazing podcaster, Gabby of the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. Um, I she, her birthday was back in March or maybe it was in April. Uh, and I gifted her a pattern on Ravelry, um, just to say happy birthday and a little something, a little surprise. And, um, she was so sweet, she wanted to send me a thank you, and she sent me a skein of her hand-dyed yarn, um, which was so unnecessary, but I'm so excited about this. This is her colorway, uh, called All Caked Up and Nowhere to Go. And I really did want to cake it up immediately, but I wanted to show you before I did. So this is her fig base, which is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% stellina. So it does have sparkle. And uh, it's 438 yards. So I think I'm, I may do another pair of fine and dandy socks with this because I really love the way my first pair com came out. Um, and I think it would be really, they'd be really fun in this colorway. So thank you so much, Gabby. Um, I really love this. It's all some of my favorite colors with the lavender and the mustard yellows and these nice shots of bright pink. It's really, really pretty. So I'm excited to, to get this on the needles for some socks. Tea time. Okay, yet more stash. Um, I am in Kristen of Vol and Vine Yarns, um, the Gory Details Yarn Club. So um, I am going to show this. Um, if you're part of the club, you probably have already gotten your your shipment. But if you haven't, um, I will let you know when I hold it up so you can look away. Um, so yeah, I'm in Kristen's Yarn Club. Uh, it's based on Edward Gory, and um, it started in March, so this is the second installment, and uh, Kristen put it in this really nice um, skein bag. This is like perfect for a skein of yarn. I don't know what else this would be made for. I think this is definitely a yarn skein bag. Um, so she says, this colorway is inspired by an excerpt from Edward Gorey's uh, The Gash Gashley Crumb Tinies, which is his uh, alphabet book. And it says, B is for basil assaulted by bears. And um, so the colorway is called Assaulted by Bears. It's on her Volga base, which is her 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon blend, 435 yards. Uh, I've used this base before and I love it. And so now I will hold it up. Yeah, Assaulted by Bears. When I opened this, I I just yeah I had a moment. It I I think the first part of it I saw was um, was down here with the lavenders, and I was already going crazy. And then I finished opening it and saw these splotches of gory red, <laughs> and it's just so so awesome. Um, if I saw this in a shop, I would definitely have to have it. Um, yeah. Amazing, Kristen. Um, and I love her labels for this club. Just amazing. I cannot wait to use this. Um, and I have I have some other fingering weights, so I've been kind of playing around with my stash. And I think that these are all kind of in the same kind of tone family. Um, and Jenny of the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast sent me the... Um, I think it's called the Jag in Garter Stitch pattern by Stephen West, which is um, kind of a, it, uh, it's several different colorways of fingering weight. Basically, I'm not sure how many, but um, yeah, I think I think I might try to to do that with these. Um, don't hold me to it because I still feel like there's so much so much I could do with these either individually or you know different combinations of them so I'm not totally sold on what I'm gonna do with them yet but I, I do like how all these kind of look together so I think I might try to make a big shawl and just use a whole bunch of fingering weight in one shot so 
Um, yeah. It's so exciting to get new yarn and, and throw it in with the stash and see different color combinations. I think that is one of the the best things about having a stash and not feeling guilty about it because sometimes something will sit in your stash for so long and you're not you don't know what you're gonna do with it and then you buy new yarn and all of a sudden you have a project that you can't wait to start. So yeah. Just justifying my stash right now. Um so yeah, while Shane was here last last Saturday, um, was it only last Saturday? I feel like it was. I don't know. I'm so I'm so screwed up with with time lately. But anyway, while we were in my local yarn shop, um, I was looking at some of the new yarns that Nancy has there for the summer, and um, I was looking at this pattern book. Well, actually, it first started with me looking at this yarn, which I always look at while I'm there. Um, I've picked this skein up so many times. Um, this is Blue Heron Yarns, which I don't know if I've even seen anywhere else. Um, this is their Rayon Metallic, and it's 550 yards of, yeah, like a fingering weight Rayon Metallic blend. So it's not Stellina. It's actually a strand of gold sparkly thread that runs through the whole thing. And the colorway is called Celadon. So Celadon is a shade of green. Um, so it is, and it's a little bit tonal. And yeah, it's this really subtle green, kind of gold green. And then with the, the gold thread, um, it feels so nice. It's really slinky and silky. And, um, I mean, I, I love it just as a skein. I almost caked it up right away to start making what I'm going to make with it, but I kind of wanted to have it as just what it is um, for a little while and just let it inspire me. But it's gorgeous, and it really reminds me of my prom dress that I wore at my senior year high school prom um, because my dress was celadon green, and it had just a, it had like a, a sparkly kind of neckline and yeah so this really reminds me of my prom dress um, it was that color and um, not that prom was all that important to me but I really did like my dress um, it made me feel kind of grown up I guess you know it's like prom is uh, this thing that you hear about when you're a freshman and then I don't know it's made out to be a big deal it wasn't that big deal a, a big deal. A, it wasn't that big of a deal to me, but yeah, I, I don't know. I liked my dress a lot, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I, I got, I, I had this in my hand and I was browsing around more and was looking at this yarn, which is uh, Fortuna. It's called Fortuna by, um, I think it's classic. Yeah. Classic Elite. This is a 58% linen, 26% viscose, 16% cotton blend. Um, it calls for US 4 to 5 needles, so it's a, a sport weight. And um, this is the brass colorway. So it's another weird brownie, mustardy color. So obviously I'm really into it. And I, um, so I was looking at this, and then, of course, conveniently, there was this pattern book right by that yarn because this is the the classic elite pattern booklet for the Fortuna yarn and I do really like the the shirt on the cover and actually if I really wanted to I could do this and have this be the main color and then this as the contrast but that not, that's not what I'm doing um, <coughs> I actually like almost all of the patterns in this booklet, so I feel like it was a good buy. Um, I am making the, it's called Frankie. Let me find the big picture. So this is the Frankie pattern. And it's actually two tank tops layered over each other. So it's two individual pieces. Um, and then they show how you can wear them either separately or together. So I'm going to be doing the bottom layer in the uh, Blue Heron rayon yarn and the top layer, so this part, in the Fortuna. 
So I'm so excited. Um, I'll show you what they look like together. I don't know if I did that already. Um, yeah, and I thought I was being crazy with this color combination, and then I had uh, I had it all sitting on the, the table in the yarn shop, and one of the other ladies said, "Oh, I love those colors together." I was like, "Really?" So I'm not I'm not just imagining that that looks really really nice together. I mean, the gold there there are gold tones in this that really pick up in the um, in the rayon yarn, so. Yay, I'm so excited. I just had to do it. And I think it was a good investment because I'm basically getting three um, three looks out of it. I'm getting two different tank tops that I can wear individually or I can wear them together. So I'm getting a lot of a lot of variety for my for my wardrobe. I also really like this pattern. That one's called Florence. Um, that one looks really nice and comfy. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so yeah, I really, I really wanted to cast this on right away, but I wanted to do the the other tank first because I've been planning on that one for a while, and plus I wanted to show you this yarn before I before I mess with it. Um, actually, so this is also this also has a special past connection for me because Fortuna was my um, my grandmother's name, uh, my mom's mom. And I really didn't even pay attention to that when I bought it. I wasn't thinking about the name of the yarn. I was just thinking, ooh, I want that. But yeah, her, uh, my, my mom, -um, we called her, was named Fortuna. And her nickname was Toonie. And so yeah, it's, this is going to be a really special project with um, yeah, some, some good memories attached to it. So I'm really excited about it. And plus Shane, Shane said it was okay for me to buy it. And he was there, so it'll remind me of when Shane came to visit. So that's really nice. Um, all right, so we're almost through with stash, and then I think I think I will almost be ready to wrap it up. So maybe it's this isn't taking as long as I thought it was going to be. Um, so when was it? Yesterday, I I went back to the Black Sheep Yarn Shop um, just to hang out and knit for a little bit and um, get Nancy's advice on on the tank top because of, you know, I was wondering if I should shorten the length of it. And um, she's she's having a sale right now because she'll be, oh, <clears throat> my throat is not enjoying me talking this much. So Nancy will be moving her shop soon um, up the road in Kent. And so she's having a little bit of a sale and you know, sales. Um, so I've always been looking at this yarn in her shop. This is, <coughs> excuse me, this is the Ito yarn. So, I mean, I love Habu textiles. I'm, I'm really obsessed with all these weird linen and silk and stainless steel yarns that these companies make. So this is also a Japanese yarn company that does some similar things to Habu textiles. And this is their Kinu face. It's 100% uh, silk, but it's a Tweety silk. It's really interesting texture. And um, this is the cream colorway. Um, so yeah, in the shop, it looked, it, in my apartment, it definitely looks a little more neutral, but it does have this rosy pink tone to it. And I really like um, pale rosy pink. If I'm gonna do pink, it's going to be more in the in like the pale rosy versions of pink. So um, I've been kind of looking at this for a while and not knowing what I would do with it. And um, Nancy was looking for a pattern um, to combine this with some other uh, mohair uh, by the same company. And I was really interested in it, but it would have taken four skeins of this, and I, I just was I just didn't want to make that much of an investment, even though it was on sale. Um, so I was going for getting two cones of this because it's uh, 464 yards per cone. So I figured if I got two, I'd have plenty to do another tank top or t-shirt for for summer, since that's what I'm really into doing right now is is summer wardrobe stuff. 
So I had these um, picked out and um, I decided that I'm going to make the Hane uh, t-shirt, which I thought, I don't have my phone next to me or I would try to bring up a picture of it, but it's the Hane pattern by uh, Kirsten Johnstone and um, it's a really nice pattern because it actually has several options for the sleeves, so the model and the pattern shows it with um, just a regular t-shirt sleeve and then on the other side it's um, this pretty ruffle that kind of cascades down your um, the armhole. So ruffle on one side and then t-shirt sleeve on the other. Or you could do a ruffle with just a sleeveless side. You could do two ruffles, you could do just the tank top, you could do it as a t-shirt. You get the idea, it's very interchangeable. And I think I will do it as the model has it with the ruffle and then the t-shirt, although I'm considering doing it just with the um, sleeveless on one side. Um, anyway, it's it's really pretty, um, uh, it's, it's like simple but with just that little extra detail, which that's what I really like for summer patterns is, is a pretty simple, comfortable knit with just a little something interesting about it. So um, I'm really excited about that. Um, um, what was what was I gonna say about it? Yeah, I think and and the other the other thing about this pattern is it kind of has this ruffly body to it. So it, there's short rows in the body, so it kind of scrunches up on one side and it has a little bit of this asymmetrical kind of slouchy. I don't know how to describe it. But yeah, it has short rows that um, kind of scrunch it up on one side. So. Yeah, it's just it's just a really cool pattern. I'm I'm looking forward to to doing it because I think it'll be interesting interesting to knit, even though it's um, mostly stockinette. It does have these interesting um, techniques to it, and um, I think it's a pattern that I'll be able to use multiple times since it does have so many options for the sleeves. So again, I'm trying to make the most out of each purchase. <laughs> there have been a lot of purchases, but I'm trying to be really calculated about them. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm really curating um, a wardrobe that I'm going to be really happy with um, once I make it all. Um, it's really too bad that I don't have the time to just, um, you know, just get it, get these pieces as fast as I want them. But I'm really excited for all the all the ward like all the pieces that I have yarn for right now because I think I'm going to love them all individually and I think I'm also being really smart lately about how they will all work together so how my sweaters will work work with my scarves and um, incorporating my tank tops as layering pieces into the fall and, and like early spring with sweaters over them and stuff like that I think it's all really going to work well together so I feel like I'm making really cohesive decisions about um, what I want to make and what colors I want to use. So I'm really excited. I just wish I had more time to knit right now, but um, it'll happen, of course. Oh, I did, I did buy one more thing yesterday. I've been looking at this pattern book for months at, the, at my local yarn shop, and um, I think this was her last copy, so I grabbed it up yesterday. It's um, it's called Ami Mono. It's by Helga Isiger, so it's the um, the Isiger Yarn Company, and this is called the Map Collection. And I love this jacket, this sweater jacket on the cover. And I really love the styling of this book, even though it kind of sucks as a knitting, um, as far as showing knitting patterns, because the pictures are pretty stylized, and um, a lot of them are pretty pretty dark and don't really show like this is one of the patterns for the sweater and um, I think it's a beautiful photograph and I think it really shows how the garment can fit into your lifestyle basically um, and how you can dress it up um, but it doesn't really show what's going on so much in the pattern um, because actually this sweater has a lot more detail to it than it looks um, and they do have, you know, the better pictures of it just as a garment in the back. So that's actually that sweater. 
And so you can see it has just very subtle color changes, which you could make more, more accented if you picked more contrasting colors, but I really like that piece. Um, that would be a really good staple in a, in a wardrobe. Um, I really like this piece. It has a kangaroo pocket, and I think I have some yarn in Deep Stash that might work for that. I'm not sure about the color, but if I could try to over dye it, I think I might be able to make that with yarn that I already have. Um, so yeah, I, I don't have any specific plans to make anything from this um, anytime soon. Yeah, I love that jacket. I think that's so cool. But yeah, I, I got this because I'm, I'm really inspired by all these pieces. Um, this sweater, I don't know if I would do it in a, in a striped yarn like that, but the shape of this is really great. And um, I think I could do it so that it would ju was just a t-shirt because they show it here without, without the sleeves, I think. So yeah, really, really, really nice patterns in this book. But yeah, it's interesting. Like I said, I mean, like this is this is another one of the photos. So it's more of a very stylized model um, photo shoot versus um, trying to show the garments. But um, I really love looking at this book. I love the feel of it. So yeah, the map collection by Helga Isiger, and it's really lovely. <sighs> So, I think that might be it. Um, I'm glad I was able to sit down today and get an episode recorded. And, um, yeah, other than, other than that, I mean, I have been really busy at work, so um, I haven't had kind of the mental space when I come home to work on really detailed projects, so I've been reading instead, and trying to get back into writing a little bit more and um, yeah I hope you all are doing very well and I hope you are getting the time to knit uh, enough to keep you sane at least because um, that's that's where I'm at is I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that I do give myself enough time to to knit for sanity and I hope you maybe have treated yourself lately to some lovely new string, as I have. And, um, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess I should just say thank you so much for watching and sticking with me. I know that I do go on um, unexpected hiatuses a lot, and it's not that I don't want to be recording on a regular basis. It's just uh, just been busy and hectic and um, when I do sit down I want to make sure that I, I um, I'm in a good mood to do it and I am really behind on other podcasts too and I think that's that's because I haven't had the time to knit myself so it's it's hard for me to want to watch knitting podcasts because um, you know, I'm like, oh man, I wish I could be knitting and finishing projects like everybody else. Um, so yeah, I really, I'm really behind. Um, I'm trying to catch up. I did, I was able to catch up on a lot of them this weekend. And um, yeah, so if you have mentioned me on your podcast, thank you so much. I'm sorry that I'm so out of touch recently. Uh, I really do appreciate my viewers so much and all the comments I get on Instagram. Um, I read them all and it makes me really happy makes my day and um, it's just really nice to to communicate with all of you so um, happy knitting everyone and I will see you next time bye